United Community responds to Donald Trump's ongoing hatred and racism. One of our community's most distinguished elders, a local and national civil and human rights legend and icon, a man who some of us refer to as the sage. Minister Franklin D. Florence Sr. has called us together to develop a united community response and to demand an apology regarding Donald Trump's ongoing hateful, racist rhetoric and policies, the latter of which are causing devastating negative effects on the lives of millions and millions of poor people of color in particular, as well as poor people in general. I am a former United States Army Ranger, the 75th Third. I am a former Monroe and Wayne County Sheriff's Deputy. I am a patriot. I truly believe that we live in the best country on the planet. But I also know the reality of the beginnings of this country and where we are today. And I cannot say, although I disagree with some of the administrations in Washington, D.C., I can never say that I was ashamed of the person who sat in the Oval Office until now. I think that this president not only owes an apology to the people of color, to black people, to brown people, to red people, to yellow people, and to goodwill and well-thinking, well-working white people. The people he says that he represents, he only makes those people look like they have adopted a sense of immorality, and ignorance, and they have not. For these are truly working people. We are all Americans. And so I stand firmly with my brothers and sisters this morning that this president not only owes us an apology, but I truly believe that he needs to be removed and impeached Amen. from office. People are very confused about who he really is. Well, let's see, today he did this, so it must be this, he did this. And yesterday he did that. And what has happened here in the mental health community, and I, this is a real frustration, the mental health community is always reluctant to diagnose people publicly. And there's reasons for that, because you don't want to, uh, you know, have people lose their dignity and all that. But here's the problem. Because, and I see this in the reporting a lot, because the reporting hasn't taken seriously. There are a hundred people of professional backgrounds who study it, and I don't know many of them were interviewed individually that said Donald Trump from the very beginning he's got he has a he's a disturbed person, and that wasn't just you know lightly said with I don't like you or whatever. It was seriously said. This is what democracy looks like. This is what democracy looks like. No peace. This is no peace. Trump uses the word illegal and not undocumented to draw a picture of a criminal. He told the world that Mexicans are rapists. He uses this as a basis for policies like the ending of DACA, which protected undocumented immigrants who came to the country as children. He also, he also uses this rhetoric as a basis for tearing apart family, families through violent deportations. He uses the word ungrateful to describe prominent black people who express his dislike for him. This is a basis for chipping away at access to health care, food assistance, and et cetera. That affects people of color disproportionately because structural racism forces us into poverty. His new food plan is a direct attack on the black people and it reminds me of a Frederick Douglass comment about using food to control and manipulate slaves. 
to kick a fellow citizen when they're down is shameful. I would like you to know how shameful the tweets coming from President Trump shortly after Hurricane Maria devastated the beautiful island of Puerto Rico. How offended and insulting to the Puerto Rican people who are also American citizens. You're united. We live in the United States of Abnesia. How easy it is for the U.S. to forget and intentionally not educate us on our own history. I would suggest to the President to learn some history regarding the Puerto Rican relationships with the United States. You see, Puerto Rico was considered a key to the geopolitical and economic ambitions of the United States as part of the U.S. broader policies to obtain new acquisitions without any promise of statehood. In 1898, U.S. troops invaded the island of Puerto Rico. U.S. troops took over Puerto Rico. So Puerto Ricans did not invite the U.S. armed forces to Puerto Rico. It was invaded. So with that invasion comes responsibilities. In 1917, American citizenship was imposed on Puerto Ricans. Timely, of course, so that nearly 18,000 Puerto Rican men could join the armed forces and fight in World War I, and even more were sent to fight in World War II on behalf of the United States. 18,000 Puerto Rican men imposed citizenship just in time to fight in the world wars. Jones Act of 1917 controls Puerto Rico's shipping laws and confers U.S. citizenship. But this is not equal political representation or equal citizenship. It does not recognize all the constitutional rights and duties, such as having voting delegates in the U.S. Congress. Puerto Rico has no one representing them in the U.S. Congress. No rights to vote for federal presidential election. How convenient. And no right to a trial by jury. Puerto Ricans living on the island cannot exercise a full range of their citizenship. The Jones Act of 1917, and that's over 101 years ago, played a major role in delaying the relief that the island so desperately needed. It took weeks for us to get relief. In the meantime, people were dying. Given these oppressive policies and distinction in citizens' rights remaining, a defining characteristic of U.S. colonization of the island, we are a colony. The President's response to trauma and devastation by Hurricane Maria while he was playing golf seemed to get worse with every tweet. The tweets were unpresidential. The most basic fundamental responsibility of a President of the United States, the President of the most powerful country in the world, is to show up, not to be playing golf, and provide assistance and relief that American citizens need. The Puerto Rican people didn't need this type of insult. And by the way, why is it that he didn't put the same tweets out when it came to Texas and Florida? Mm -hmm. President Trump played down the situation. Puerto Rico, oh, they didn't have such a high toll in deaths. He claimed that if he had to give himself a score, he would get 10 out of 10. These microaggressive acts to remind Puerto Ricans that we are a colony and not full citizens, to kick fellow citizens down is shameful. Will we be back here? Will we be back here? Thank you for coming.